Welcome to the Wall Street Crossover Show brought to you by Tip TV in conjunction with our sponsors, Admiral Markets. Gives me great pleasure once more to reintroduce Mr. Darren Sinden, market commentator of Admiral Markets. Uh, Darren, good afternoon to you, young man. Good afternoon, Nick. How are the W, sir? Uh, very well today, thank you. Excellent. If you're watching for the first time, we always say this. If there's something you want to see, if there's an extra segment, let us know. We won't take it the wrong way, hopefully. Um, um, we, we'll, we always welcome feedback and suggestions from our audience. Excellent. OK, let's go to the first slide of today, data released over the European session. Uh, relatively quiet in terms of significant data today, Nick, but I picked out three things that have caught my eye. First of all, um, German producer price uh, index numbers for April, looking here at the year-on-year -year measure, down by 1.5%. Uh, so slightly weaker than forecast, which was a negative 1.4%, though better than the minus 1.7% uh, we saw in March. But as with uh, the Swiss numbers, which we talked about uh, recently, uh, they are suggestive that deflation isn't going away uh, from the Eurozone and in this, in this instance in Germany. So the, the ECB, you know, has, has, has a good reason to continue with its, uh, QE. its QE policy. And, uh, you know, they, they will definitely want to see... Uh, so at least uh, a, a modest positive number for some of these things going forward of, of this year and the early part of uh, 2016. Um, staying with the sort of central bank theme, and it's been the, the big theme really of this week, uh, we've had the Monetary Policy Committee minutes uh, here in the UK today. To, uh, just the, the people aren't aware, these are the, the notes basically that are kept after every Monetary Policy Committee meeting, and they just give you a flavour of what the members of that committee were thinking. No surprise to find that uh, the members voted 9 to nil to keep rates and QE on hold. Rates at 0.5% uh, and QE where it is at uh, 375 billion spent so far. Same as last month, two of the members of the committee were finally balanced. A couple of the comments that sort of attributed to, to the minutes as well. Uh, the bank felt that inflation could pick up quite sharply towards the end of 2015, inferring that we shouldn't worry too much about the deflationary number we saw yesterday, and that GDP for Q1 could be revised up above that very, very poor uh, figure we saw earlier in the month. Um, not uncommon for GDP numbers. Revisions. To back to quite interesting, this deflation, that everybody is telling me that, oh, this is a very short-term scenario and, you know, we'll be back to normal inflation over the next 12 to 18 months. Are, are, are we being just a little bit... I, I'm a, unfortunately, well, unfortunately or unfortunately, I'm in the camp actually that believes that once deflation gets a, gets a foothold, it's very difficult to ring it out. Of the Couldn't system, agree more. And that there are structural reasons behind it. Yep. Because just the way uh, that the modern world is set up, prices are flattened, margins in business are generally being compressed, and there are lots of things um, that are driving down prices and, and hence creating uh, disinflation or, or deflation in, in the worst case. And I don't necessarily think that it's that easy to get rid of. I think the, the marginal figure we saw uh, this week from the UK, as I said that's yesterday, I think I said that this could just turn out to be a statistical error. So we shouldn't read too much into to one one data point. But if it became a trend, then I think we'd need to, you know, to, to, to take a step back and think yeah. about how to get rid of it completely. And just repeat, equity markets don't like deflation. In terms of Japan, what's going on there? Uh, well, uh, su surprising perhaps to some extent, we've got some very good uh, Q1 GDP numbers fr from Japan. Uh, if you look at the, that measure Q GDP growth on an annualised basis, it, it rose to 2.4% per annum. Or if you prefer to look at it in the way that we do here in, in Europe, uh, it was 0 0.6 plus 0 0.6 on a quarterly basis. But either way, well ahead of forecast, which on an annualised basis were for plus 1.5% or plus 0.4% in terms of the quarterly measure. And it's interestingly, it's been put down, or the gain has been put down to household and business spending. Not too surprising about the business spending, but Japan's had a reputation of you know, being very conservative and a big, big saver for the spenders as far as households are concerned. Uh, so it's interesting to see uh, consumers coming out and spending money. And that's the kind of trend that the government and the Bank of Japan will, will be looking to see more of going forward rather than less. Understood. OK, let's have a look at the FTSE 100 movers this morning. Uh, well, we'll start where we left off, actually, with these. Nick, we talked about Vodafone yesterday uh, on their numbers. that Down 3%. They, were, yeah, they <laughs> weren't particularly well received. Um, what a difference a day makes 24 hours later. Uh, there's talk of a possible merger with Liberty Global, a company that we, met, we mentioned recently again as being possibly interested in ITV. Um, and so the market seems to prefer to... But again, there was a recent piece of broker research suggesting a 38% per 
premium could be in that price if there weren't to be yeah bid I, think, for. I think it's always good to, to have a rule of thumb of around 30 percent as a bid premium anyway um it's but I think what this tells us is that the, mar the market is in the mood to buy the rumour and sell the fact as yeah. far as most of these companies are concerned. But, but very interesting, up 4.3%. And as we'll see in a moment, you know, there's, there's perhaps a bit more meat on the bones to this than, than might first meet the eye. Um, and then Marks and Spencers. Uh, the still, first rise in profits. Yeah, still a British retailing under, you know, uh, everyone's got a view of Marks and Spencers, you know, whoever they are in life. Uh, yes, and the first rise in profits for four years, uh, pre-tax profits up 6.1%. And uh, the company also managed to announce a, a token, 150 million share buyback, and f that's basically a way of returning cash to shareholders. It's a bit of a thank you, really, for persevering with them. Um, it's 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 one swallow it doesn't necessarily make a summer. So we look again. We want, we want to see uh, the trends continuing when the management uh, update updates the market next. But it's at least a move in the right direction, and they're at 1.3 percent on the back of that. So the management there has been under pressure for many years, hasn't yeah, it? Yes. Okay, um, let's move on now to the M um, and A rumours and movers. Okay, so we so we're, we're turning to a sector that we've spoken about before. Uh, probably two or three times actually in the short life of this show and that is cable TV back in focus again today there's a, a transatlantic deal um, been announced this morning Altis SA it's a French uh, operator is to buy a 70% stake in Suddenlink this is an off-market deal because the company is both privately held okay. uh, but it's a deal worth about 9.1 billion dollars uh, in total including debt the debt that uh, Altis will take on when it buys this stake in Suddenlink. Altis operates across Europe and and in the Caribbean in, in both the cable TV and the telecoms market and Suddenlink is the ninth largest uh, TV or cable TV provider in the USA. Now what's interesting is that this comes in a week where we already heard on Monday that Charter, which is ticker CHTR in the US, will continue with its uh, merger with Bright House, uh, which is a Florida-based uh, cable TV provider and is the sixth largest operator in the UK and that's a deal worth around 10.4 billion dollars so you know in one week we're talking about 20 billion dollars worth of deals in the cable TV industry in the States we've just saw earlier Vodafone are up on a potential uh, which would be a, a, a much much bigger deal if uh, Liberty Media are interested there and we talked a week ago about ITV perhaps being yeah. in the sights of Liberty. Well we've heard Richard Hunter the head of equities at Hargreaves Lansdowne come on the show and say the media sector he thought would be in vogue this year and clearly. Um, uh, yes I think it is it's, that's the case and, and you know and this this won't be the last of the, of the sort of uh, the asset gathering that we'll see from from companies in this sector they, they jockey for position to find the best mix of content and uh, connect, connectivity See, understood okay so let's move on to the u.s data points to keep an eye on today so it's um it's quite a, a spartan um u.s data page today but there's there's one thing on there that sort of stands out and that's the fomc minutes uh which which won't actually be released until two o'clock uh, New York time, so seven o'clock here in London, and obviously the question the market has in mind is whether whether the Fed is going to raise or not raise rates. It's mixed messages to my mind. Yep. Um, Charles Evans was speaking, who's the Chicago Fed boss, was speaking again in in uh, Munich today, um, and he he you know said what he said basically on Monday that you know inflation is way off the two percent target. He doesn't see any great rush. Uh, to raise rates. Yep. He also said he felt that 5% that wasn't necessarily the natural rate of unemployment in the US and it could dip below that. Um, but we've got other people who, who, are, who are calling for, I mean the San Francisco Fed put, put out a note yesterday saying that they thought rates could rise earlier because they thought GDP would be revised up. So you've got different parts of the Federal Reserve Committee saying different things. Uh, going through the minutes uh, line by line is what some people will be doing. Um, markets can read into what they will. I think. I think at the moment the Fed's trying to uh, to please, you know, all of the people all of the time, um, and I think we need to perhaps wait till Janet Yellen speaks on Friday to and read these minutes in conjunction to see what they're really on. saying. And then um, uh, a figure that's uh, been overlooked really for the last uh, couple of months, and that's crude oil inventories. And that's a that's a weekly data point on a Wednesday, isn't it? It is. Yep. Um, it, it, it's uh, it's the measure of uh, of the backlog, if you will, of, of barrels of oil that there are in the in the United States. But it's, it, it it is weekly, and it has been overshadowed re really in recent times by both the price of oil and by measures such as the Baker Hughes oil rig count, which have tended to be more in the limelight. Nonetheless, it's probably worth having a look at this number today. So we're looking. For for a decline of uh, just over a million barrels uh, of oil today uh, versus a decline of around 2.2 million barrels last week. Um, it, the price of oil rising, production p 
potentially slowing down uh, or having slowed down slightly in the US. It wouldn't surprise me to see a bit of a drawdown. But uh, let's see what the number brings. It could easily go the other way too. Understood. OK, so let's wrap up with the US pre-market movers and the chart levels to keep an eye out for. Uh, right, we said it's a big week for, uh, for US retailers in terms of reporting and uh, it's been a difficult week also for those companies. So Lowe's has reported today. For, for anyone who doesn't know, this is, a, I suppose, a, a US version of a B&Q. It's a home improvement chain, much like Home Depot that reported yesterday. Um, Lowe's has had uh, a bit of a shocker. They missed by four cents on earnings. They missed on revenues. Guidance was OK, but nothing spectacular. Remember, I, I said yesterday, I thought Home Depot numbers were OK and they got slammed. Um, Lowe's has produced poor numbers and, and uh, unsurprisingly, they've been called down about 7% pre-market. And then moving on to Lending Club, another company that we've uh, we mentioned a couple of times in these shows. They've been upgraded at Morgan Stanley. Uh, reiterates their uh, overweight recommendation. They've got a price target out of $23 versus the current price of $17.62. Um, you might remember that Lending Club had excellent figures a couple of weeks ago. They got written up um, in the US press and pushed on TV quite quite strongly as well. Um, so up another 3.8%, certainly one to keep an eye on, though it can be a bit of a volatile stock. And slip. In terms of the markets, um, Somewhat quieter today, um, 69.45 is our downside level in FTSE, 70,000, sorry, 70,000, 7,050. Uh, the upside level is straddling 7,000 at the moment. Uh, the DAX, much calmer today. Again, just to, to, to waiting in Vodafone, if something did happen in there, obviously that would take us through 7,000. Yes, yes, 7, absolutely. Yeah, indeed it would, yeah. Um, uh, the DAX, again, much quieter today, as I said, uh, 11,602 on the downside and 11,000. 848 on the upside, obviously we had a big move uh, with the week a year early in the week. US indices, uh, the, again, they were both marginally better, so it just really tightened our range slightly. Uh, the S&P on the downside, 2100 even, still in there, and, and a new recent high, 2134, would be our upside level. Uh, similar story in the Dow, we tighten up the range slightly, 18,208, I would suggest is a downside level to watch, and to the upside, if we're going to make a further gains, 18,352. Uh, currencies, also uh, a bit of a change here. Uh, a little bit more weakness in the euro against the dollar today. So now we're looking at 110.64 as, uh, as a downside, downside level and 111.75 to the upside. Obviously, dollar has slipped back below 80. So here we're looking at 78.78 uh, .78, uh, on the downside and 79.30 as an upside level. Uh, dollar yen. Uh, well, surprisingly, given those uh, strong GDP numbers, uh, the yen's actually weakened against uh, against the dollar. So we're now looking at uh, 120.48 on the downside and a new uh, upside target or upside level to watch, I should say, of 121.25. And then uh, in cable, again, uh, pound slightly easier again. So 154.95 on the downside and 155.85 on the upside are the levels to watch. OK, Darren Sinder, market commentator, Admiral Markets. Thank you very much. Thank that you. wraps up the Wall Street crossover show. We'll be back same time tomorrow at one o'clock. Have a good day. Thank you.